by military men the boldest and most successfully executed cavalry raid of the war between the states. The Battle of Hartsville was a classic execution of military tactic that made the thunderbolt of the Confederacy, Colonel John Hunt Morgan, legendary. Jeff and I are are down here at the uh, Battle of Hartsville, Tennessee. And got a pretty deep hole right there. And my first find, I've uh, dug a couple of square nails and an old fence staple. But that's a 58. Not sure if that's been fired or just been mashed. It doesn't matter, that's a good find, good way to start the day. Hope we find a bunch of these. Pretty deep hole right there. I've got a piece of lead, I don't know if that, it looks like it's melted. Looks like it might be a melted bullet. Could be just a big piece of camp lead, I don't know. But the uh, tent line here ran right toward those, toward those woods right there right along where Jeff is or right to the right. We'll keep looking. That'd be a 12 inch piece of camp lid. Well, while I was digging mine, with, Jeff, the gain, with the gain set on six, pick that up. It was at the very bottom of that hole. <sighs> Man, that's a bit, or is that a bullet? I kind of think it's a melted bullet. Let me see yours again. Get that little pistol. That's right on top of the ground. Huh. Little pistol bullet. Piece of camp lead. What if there was a fire pit over there or something? I don't know. I've got my hole right there. You want to come hunt around it a little bit. Colonel Morgan had learned that the Federals had established strong garrisons at Gallatin, Castilian Springs, and Hartsville, Tennessee. At Hartsville, Colonel Absalom B. Moore had a force of 2,400 men, consisting of the 106th and 108th Ohio Infantry, the 104th Illinois Infantry, the 13th Indiana Artillery, the 2nd Indiana Cavalry, and a portion of the 11th Kentucky Cavalry. But I found it right over there. It's pretty much just the back. You can see a little bit of the uh, front left. It's yeah, I it can. Just, you can tell it's been busted for a long time. Yeah, just the back. Huh? What do you got here? I don't know what that is. I see, see it. it. Yeah, I see it right there. I was gonna, don't know what I it is. Where it was laying right there. So. Yeah. Oh, that's a big rivet. Yeah, well, that's, that's a I good rivet. Was... That's a nice rivet there. Yeah. I've got a cuff button over here. Looks like a, looks like an eagle. No, the ground's still frozen. The top two or three inches is, yeah. I 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's an eagle mountain. And Can it's. Check been over? Yeah, I think it's still on there. Yeah. I don't want to do too much to it. But it is an eagle button. Eagle cuff. Ground is still froze in spots here. Uh, pretty sure that's an eagle button. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Has it got the droop wings? Man, <laughs> let me see that. It kind of looks like it from right here. If it is, that's Confederate. Yeah. Let us get a brush on this. It's not a Confederate button like we thought, but you can see the uh, anchor and the eagle there. And uh, that's a bucket list for me. I never have found one of those. That's a great find. It's worth the hunt right there. Morgan felt that he could slip through, hit the Union forces quickly, and destroy the Hartsville garrison as his scouts had reported the federal numbers to be about 1,500. I got what I think is a bullet out of this hole right here. See it right here. Hadn't broke it out yet. Oh yeah. Yep, yeah, it's gonna be a nice 58. That's a good bullet right there. That's a drop. That's a drop right there. I'll take it. I've got another bullet right here. Come out of the hole right there. I've just got it started to be uncovered right there. It's going to be another 58 to drop. That wasn't a screamer, but uh, Obviously, it was good enough to dig, had a good enough signal that I dug it. Great find. I don't know if you can, yeah, I think you can see that uh, brass residue right there. And uh, and you can see it here, I'll pop it out. It's a knapsack triangle from the American Civil War. It's been a while since I found one of those. Long time. I found some J-hooks, but triangles have been hard to come by over the last year or so. I sure take it. Uh, Jeff is over in that direction, over that hill, and he called me and said he's got some stuff, so I'm going to go over there and see what he's got. Morgan and his 2,100 men left Baird's Mill at 10 o'clock in the morning on December the 6th, 1862. After arriving in Lebanon, Tennessee around two o'clock in the afternoon and marching in sleet and snow for eight miles, his men stopped to rest and eat. Arriving at the Cumberland River at 10 o'clock that night, they began their crossing of the cold dark water having marched over 25 miles through snow, sleet, and icy conditions in just 12 hours moved over on the other side of this camp right here. In there, that's a 54, ain't it? You know what? I don't know. Could be. I don't know. It kind of seems like it's 58 to me. It's got three rings, sir. Yeah. It's seen its better days. Well, it's probably been run over by Oh, yeah. Something other. Horse, plow, you never know. Good find. That's what we're after. Yep. Civil War bullets. Just over from where I'm finding those 58s. Now that hole, I don't know if this is period or not. It's a, uh, it's a brass rivet. Sure sounded good. Out of that hole right there, I've got a fired bullet. Uh, I believe is a round ball. Pretty sure it's a round ball. It sure is flat. And it doesn't seem big enough to 
be a 69. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's a period though. Because of the complicated river crossing, Morgan's forces were now reduced to 1,300. As they approached the federal camp, the first Union pickets were captured, but their backups fired shots at the Confederates and prevented their surprise attack. Morgan's men, in one hour and 15 minutes, outmaneuvered and outfought the enemy, thus totally defeating a much larger force than their own and escaped back across the Cumberland River before Union forces could arrive from Castilian Springs. Jeff's made a mess right over here. Yep. He's got holes dug everywhere. Goodness gracious. What about that? That is gold. Sure is. Looks like the initials on it's LB or something, what I can make out. On the front? Yeah. It's not marked uh -uh. inside, which means that it's going to be... That's not plated. That's the real deal. That's real gold. Yeah, it kind of looks like maybe LB. Hard to tell. Uh, that's hard to get. What about that? That's my first gold ring. That's your first one? Yep. Right here amongst all this camp lead. Yep. <laughs> This is a fantastic find by Jeff. It is a gold shield ring dug at the Battle of Hartsville, Tennessee site at the same depth and location of Civil War bullets and camp lead dug at the same time. It's called a shield ring because you see the shield shape of the ring face with the initials CB engraved inside the shield. The ring has no maker's mark inside, but that's common of rings from the middle 1800s. Jeff had Larry Hicklin of Middle Tennessee Civil War Relics look at the ring and he verified it was Civil War period. It was common for Civil War officers to purchase and wear Civil War shields, core badges, and even shield rings made of brass, silver, and gold. This ring is small. That puzzled us at first until our research showed many examples of Civil War soldiers wearing pinky rings, such as this picture of Francis E. Brownell of the 11th New York Infantry and this unknown Civil War soldier. Jeff and I obviously wanted to know who this ring belonged to and wondered what a search of the initials CB would turn up, obviously recognizing that we would never be 100% sure who the owner was. We know the 106th and 108th Ohio Infantry and the 104th Illinois Infantry and the 2nd Indiana Cavalry were all in the location where the ring and bullets were dug. Assuming that the ring probably belonged to an officer instead of an enlisted man, we searched the rosters of all of these troops and came up with just one CB, Christian Beck, a captain with the 2nd Indiana Cavalry, Company L. Did this ring belong to Christian Beck? We can't be sure of that, but it's possible and maybe even probable. Regardless, Jeff ranks it as one of his best Civil War finds ever. Got another one right next to it. What is this? Is it a 58? Yep, 58. Boy, it's a pretty drop right there. Right in here, I found that other bullet right over there and the ring right up there. And then a uh, camp lead right through here. So this is a this is a spot thing yep, right in spot. here. Well, good job. We'll uh we we'll hit it a little more right in here. Yep. Pretty deep hole right there. 
and it's right in the bottom of this plug here and I can tell that it's 58 it sure is muddy here today that's okay it'll clean up another good bullet I don't know and this one was right in the bottom of that plug right there it's a 58 mini ball I don't know if it's been in a fire I think it has I think it's melted right there I don't think it's been fired I think it's melted so there was a campfire right here at one time that's a good sign there's a few relics over here they're just kind of scattered around Jeff said he's got a good drop yeah it is this I never this. I'll tell you what this never gets old. No, it doesn't. Found that one over in the hole right over here close to us. That's a melted something out there. You can see the rings on it. Yeah, it's fifty eight. Yeah. I got one that's half melted. Let me see your good one there. A minute. Get a close up of it. Yeah, this just never gets old now. Finding relics from the well, American. You do get tired. Yeah, I'm tired. We've put in a day. Right here next to the bullets in the ring. And look there. Oh, I see, see it. it. I see it. It's right in there. Is that a four hole? Yeah. Yeah, it's four hole. That's what it looks Tell like. It there. Yeah. Trouser button, huh? Well, I'd say that's period two. Yeah it's, yeah, it's period. Yeah. Old trouser, but I wonder. Somebody might have got killed right here. Federal losses were 58 killed, 204 wounded, and 1,834 captured. Southern losses included 21 killed, 104 wounded, and 14 missing. For this daring victory, Morgan was promoted to Brigadier General. <laughs>